So let's begin um, this morning with um, a couple of questions. Um, maybe a question like, um, how, how open are you to hear the truth? How open are you to hear the truth? How open are you to hear something that maybe is a bit upsetting or a bit uncomfortable? And have you ever come to church and been shocked by the homily? Because Jesus this morning, when he was speaking to the apostles, he says, does this shock you? Good. That was his, that was his, 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 um, his answer to, to that. And I am very conscious of, of, of that, that because I'm always, when I'm up here, I'm always, always, always speaking first and foremost to myself because I too need to hear what I say. And if it doesn't come from the heart, it's no good. And number two, if I get up here Sunday after Sunday or in any church, and I at times don't feel uncomfortable and embarrassed in what I'm saying, then I might as well not say anything. And that's very, very true. I might as well not say anything. Sometimes we have to say things that people don't like. There was a man, and he was in a shopping mall, in a quite a busy shopping mall one day, and he was on his cell phone. And the conversation went something like, like, like this. Yes, I know, I know it's what you want. Yes, I hear you. I know it's what you want. But I don't think tattoos are a good idea. And, I, and that also goes for body piercing. And also, I do think, as long as you live in my house, you ought to respect my wishes. Meanwhile, the people there who were listening to him were really saying, good, 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 good for him. And then came the closing comment. You don't need a tattoo. Besides, you are 75 years old, my mother. <laughs> she, she wasn't willing to listen. Now, let's um, be serious for a couple of moments. Um, and I want to hang, if that's the phrase to use, whatever I say this morning, on a little phrase that's very important, and I would like you, I would like you maybe to take this phrase home and to think about it and to work it out for yourselves. Jesus never said, worship me, but he did say, follow me. Now, there is a big difference between worshiping Jesus and following him. You can worship Jesus, and it can be very comfortable, and, it, and, it, and it's costless. It doesn't cost you. But Jesus didn't say that. He didn't ask us to, to do that. But he did time and time again say, follow, follow me. Now, how do you feel when you hear something in the gospel that's uncomfortable? How do I feel? That's more important for me to answer that. I skirt about it. I'm very good at doing that. I give it a different little twist or interpretation. And I was very conscious of that this week because one of the gospels this week, and it's a wonderful example of what I'm trying to say this this morning. Um, it's the gospel of the rich young man who came to Jesus and he said, Lord, 
what must I do to gain eternal life? I've been very, very good. In fact, I've, I've been wonderful, Lord. I've kept all the commandments. I've done this, I've done that, and I've done the other thing. I've been accumulating, Lord, all these graces. Important word. He was into accumulation. A lot of people are like that. Accumulation of good deeds, graces, trying to convince the Lord that I am worthy to be saved. You can't earn salvation. It's a gift from the Lord. And so he says to the Lord, I've been doing all these things, worshiping God, keeping all the commandments. And Jesus, he must have been really annoyed with him. And he, and he said to him, well, if you say, what must I do to gain eternal life? There's one more thing you must do. And you know the answer. He said, go sell all you have and give to the poor and then come follow me. But we're told he was the 13th apostle that never became an apostle because he walked away. Oh yes, he was into worshiping, but he wasn't into following. There is a difference, isn't there? How in God's name, and I mean in God's name, did we in the church get hooked on things that are not really important? Things like we made um, birth control, homosexuality, people involved in second marriages where the first marriage had, had, hadn't been annulled. We made that the litmus test of being a Christian. We even went further and said, people like you mustn't come to communion. You're not fit to come to communion. But you can be sitting there and busy accumulating all the wealth you can possibly accum accumulate, and the church never says a thing about that. You're fine. You can come to communion as often as, as you like because we like you. <laughs> now, am I hitting the right note? And it doesn't just apply to us sitting here or to any person sitting in any other church this morning, but this is how the church acts. The pope, the, the papacy, the bishops, the priests. I feel very uncomfortable at this moment saying this, because why do I feel uncomfortable? Because I think you won't like to hear it, and you won't like me as much. And if I was in my own parish, I'd be more uncomfortable, because I think some of you might leave and may not keep coming and putting money in the basket. That's, seriously, it's, it's, it's embarrassing, but that's, but that's hitting the nail on the head, so to speak. And that's where, that's where Jesus is. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard a sermon on the Tenth Commandment? Do you even know what the Tenth Commandment is? <laughs> Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. The accumulation of goods and possessions and so on. And if you're 70 or 80 and you're still accumulating, what? <laughs> Read my lips. Are you going to do? Are you going to do? Do with it, huh? Does it make any kind of sense? No, it doesn't. It it doesn't. And Jesus said, "Don't let, don't be led astray by this. But come and follow me. Follow me." But you know something. This is what Jesus was all into, changing our attitudes and changing our way of life. But we all have a built-in resistance to change. I tell you something, it's, very, it's funny, but it's absolutely true. In the 10 years that I've been coming or more to this parish, I do notice on whatever mass I celebrate on a Sunday or on a weekday, you all sit in the same seat. Every single time. 
I go back to my own parish, and it's the same. Some of them have been sitting in the same seat for 50, 60 years. <laughs> and go to any church in the world. See, we're not open. We're not open to change. We're just, for example, this is, now, this is a good question for you to ask. Who are you going to vote for uh, in a few months' time? Are you going to vote for the party you always voted for, or, you, or are you going to vote for the person? It's good. It's good to ask yourself these questions. Two guys met one day, and the other guy said, said to the guy, said, said, said to his friend, who are you going to vote for? And he said, I'm going to vote Republicans. Well, he said, why are you going to vote for the Republicans? Well, he said, my father was a Republican, my grandfather was a Republican, and my grand great-grandfather was a Republican, so I vote for the Republicans. So the guy said to him, well, if your father was a horse thief, <laughs> and your grandfather was a horse thief, and your great-grandfather was a horse thief, would you be a horse thief? He said, no, I'd be a Democrat. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, that's, that's, that's how, can you see, it's funny, but I mean, that's where we are. We have this inbuilt reluctance to change. And that's what Jesus is saying in the gospel this morning. Come follow me. And sometimes that demands a sacrifice. It's difficult. It, it, you know, in, in the normal parish, at times things will happen and decisions will be made, and we don't like it. We don't like it. But should we walk away? Is that the way to behave? I, I, don't, think, I, I don't think so. We can't just have everything the way we want. We've got to be open to change. John Henry Newman, who was um, a cardinal, he was an Anglican priest, and he eventually became Catholic, and he was recently beatified. His most famous phrase was, to change is good. To change often is to be perfect. That's, and that's so true. And it's never too late to change. So my prayer this morning is that I in my life may have the courage to deal with the things that I need to change in my life. And even though it's embarrassing for me to say it, I need to change a lot of things in my life. And it's good for me to say that here before you. And so I pray that the Lord will give me the grace to make those changes. And I also pray that he will give you whatever help and strength you need to change. And remember, Jesus never said, worship me. He said, follow me.